Hello everyone. Once again we are back and we will continue with the second part of the story The Sound of Music. So the earlier part was about Evelyn Glennie and it was about how she overcame her problem of hearing and she became a successful percussionist. And today we are going to know about another such famous musician. So you can here see that there is a picture of some musical instruments. So you can guess by yourselves if these are some music musical instruments that you know about. Now the music that you are listening to it is the music that whenever it starts we know one name one name comes to our mind and it is none other than ustad bismillah khan so today we are going to know about this very famous person this very famous musician and who revived who revived this instrument and made the shehnai popular everywhere so let's start the story without any delay emperor aurangzeb banned the playing of a musical instrument called pungi in the royal residence for it had a shrill unpleasant sound so from the time of aurangzeb now if you remember your history chapters you will know that during the mogul era emperor aurangzeb aurangzeb was also an emperor a king and he had banned the playing of the particular instrument that you are seeing called pungi and why is it so because the sound that came out while playing it was very shrill was very unpleasant not sounding good to the ears and therefore this instrument was no longer allowed to be played in the royal quarters pungi became the general name for reader noise makers so it became a name for a group of people who would play instruments like this the flute and clarinet few had thought that it would one day be revived so there were very few people who were optimistic who were positive minded and would think that one day this instrument would again be revived would again come into use a barber of a family of professional musicians who had access to the royal palace decided to improve the tonal quality of the pungi so now there was a barber uh, who was associated with the family of musicians professional musicians now professional musicians means the people who play music who uh, use music as a way of their career okay and the particular barber who had an access to this to the royal palace and therefore he decided that he should improve the sound he should improve the sound quality of the pungi so what did he do he chose a pipe with a natural hollow stem that was longer and broader than the pungi and made seven holes on the body of the pipe so now this barber had decided that something should be done to modify and change this unpleasant sound and therefore he change the structure of this particular pungi in some manner and he made seven holes on the body of the pipe so when he played it uh, by closing and opening some of these holes as you have seen most of the flute players when they play the flute they also do the same thing they close some of the holes and make the other holes open so when this particular pungi was a bit modified was a bit changed in structures and in terms of holes and in terms of the way it was played soft and melodious sounds were produced so he played the instrument before the royalty 
and everyone was impressed. So this new version of the Pungi, this new transformation that took place uh, of the Pungi was applauded by many people. They were impressed, they were happy by this improvement and therefore it was played in the royalty, therefore it was played in the royal house. The instrument so different from the Pungi had to be given a new name. But since the structure was different, the way it was played was different, the sound that was coming was different, therefore it had to have a new name. It could not be called Pungi. So as the story goes, since it was first played in the Shah's chambers and was played by a Nai, Nai in Hindi, Nai, uh, Nai, isn't it? Barber is called a Nai. So the instrument was named as Shehnai. And this is the picture you can see of the Shehnai. Now the sound of the Shehnai began to be considered auspicious. So suddenly this new improved instrument that came out, it became very popular. And the sound that came out of it um, uh, promised to bring good fortune, was promised to be considered auspicious. And so for this reason it is still played in temples. So it was an instrument that suddenly became very popular and it started to be played in temples and became a very integral part, a very important part of the North Indian wedding. So you will see that whenever you uh, find the opportunity to go to a North Indian wedding, you will see that Shehnai is played there. So in the past the Shehnai was part of the Norbath or traditional assemble of nine instruments and till recently it was only used in temples and weddings but now it is played everywhere but the main credit the main credit that goes for bringing this instrument onto the classical stage goes to Ustad Bismillah Khan but the total credit but true credit that goes for bringing this instrument for making this instrument popular worldwide goes to none other than Ustad Bismillah Khan. So he was a very small child when he would often indulge in uh, playing and singing in, in the Bihariji temple to sing the Bhojpuri Chaita. And when it would end, he would get, he would earn a big laddu that weighed 1.25 kg. And was given by the local Maharaja. It was like a prize which was given by the local Maharaja. And this happened around many years ago. Around 80 to 90 years ago. And now from that child he has travelled far to earn the highest civilian award in India. He has received the highest civilian award in India which is the Bharat Ratna. So Ustad Bismillah Khan was... Born on 21st March, on 21 March 1916. And he belongs to a well-known family of musicians. So he was from a family of musicians from Bihar. And his grandfather, Rasul Baks Khan, was a Shehnai Nawaz of Bhojpur King's Court. His father also, Pigambar Baks, and other paternal ancestors, means along with the ancestors of his father, someone who came before his father, maybe his uh, uncles they also were great Chennai players so this boy naturally it was natural that he would also be a good Chennai player and he took to music early in life he was very interested in music from a very tender age so at the age of three when he was just three years old his mother would take him to the to his maternal uncle's house maternal means his mother's side and he would go there in Banaras, situated in Varanasi, where the, the uncle's house was situated in Varanasi, which is called now. And he was fascinated, he was attracted watching his uncles practice the Shehnai. They were playing it so well that he would often indulge in watching them for a long time. He would just sit there and he would be captivated. He would be mesmerized for hours till the show was over. And soon after, he started getting lessons. He started getting the classes that how he should play the instrument. So for many years, he continued these lessons. And 
For years to come, the temple of Balaji and Mangala Maya and the banks of the Ganga became the young apprentice's favorite haunts where he could practice in solitude. So the famous spots, the very favorite places where he would often go and practice were the temple of Balaji and Mangala Maya and the banks of the Ganga River. The flowing waters of the Ganga inspired him to improvise and invent ragas that were earlier considered to be beyond the range of the Shehnai. So he was also too intelligent in music and he loved to practice by the banks of the Ganga because it inspired him, it motivated him to improvise, to improve the music and invent ragas and make new ragas. Raga is a musical term generally used uh, to show the different types of rags and that were earlier considered to be beyond the range of the Shanae. So some ragas, uh, they were never played before and he worked on it. He tried to make it work. He tried to bring out the sound of the ragas through the Shehnai. Okay. So at the age of 14, Bismillah accompanied his uncle to the Allahabad music conference. And when the show was over, Ustad Fayyaz Khan, he patted the young boy's back. Means he was very impressed and he said, work hard and you shall make it. If you work hard, you will be able to make it work. You will become good in it. So after All India Radio uh, was opened uh, in Lucknow in 1938, Bismillah got his big break. Bismillah got his huge opportunity. He soon became an often heard Shehnai player on radio. So radio was a medium that was at that time very famous. It was a medium of reaching out people. Because at that time TV was not that popular. It was through radio that most of the important news and everything was provided to each other. So by this opening of All India Radio in Lucknow, Bismillah Khan got his opportunity and he soon became a Shehnai player, a well-known Shehnai player on radio. When India gained independence on 15 August 1947, Bismillah Khan became the first Shehnai player means he was the first Indian to greet the nation with his Shehnai. He poured his heart out into Raag Kafi from the Red Fort to an audience which included Pandit Jalan Nehru who later gave his famous Strice with Destiny speech. So when Pandit Jalan Nehru gave the Strice with Destiny speech on 15th August 1947, Bismillah Khan poured his heart out. He played the Raag Kafi so well that it mesmerized the whole audience. It became popular amongst the people. Bismillah Khan has given many memorable performances both in India and abroad. His first trip abroad was to Afghanistan. So after this program function in his own country, he soon became famous abroad as well. And the first trip that he made was to Afghanistan where King Zahir Shah was so taken in. Means King uh, Zahir Shah was so mesmerized, so attracted and charmed by the maestro, by the soothing music that was coming out of the Shehnai that he gifted Bismillah Khan with priceless Persian carpets, means expensive Persian carpets and other beautiful things, other souvenirs. And not only this, Someone else from India itself was influenced by it. Who was this person? It was film director Vijay Bhatt. Vijay Bhatt was so impressed by the music, by, by the Shehnai, that he made a movie on it. Okay, He named this movie after the instrument. After the instrument. And what was the title? It was Goonj Uthi Shehnai. The film was a hit. And one of Bismillah Khan's composition, Dilka Khilona Hai Toot Gaya, turned out to be a nationwide chartbuster. Means 
that particular song that particular song that was in the movie it became a record breaker it it was so popular that it broke all the records before despite this huge success in the celluloid world so uh, celluloid here means fashion fashion way of referring to films okay it means the film world though it was hugely successful but bismillah khan's ventures bismillah khan bismillah khan's work in film music in bollywood music was very limited he only worked in vijay bhat's kunjuri shehnai and vikram shrinivas kannada venture kannada project and the movie sanadhi apanna i just come to terms i just can't come to terms with the artificiality and glamour of the film world so bismillah khan was a very simple person as we can understand from these words he was very simple and he did not like the artificiality of the film world he mu- he made it to the world he made it throughout the country and abroad and he won many awards recognition and he was also the first indian to be invited to perform at the lincoln center hall in united states of america he took part in world exposition in montreal cannes art festival osaka trade fair and many other places and the national awards like padma shri padma bhushan padma vibhushan were conferred on him were given to him in 2001 he was awarded the highest civilian award the bharat ratna his eyes were glinting with rare happiness when he received it and he said all i would like to say is teach your children music this is hindustan's richest tradition even the west is now coming to learn our music so he was so proud of his music so proud of his nation that he told these lines that please teach your children music it is a richest tradition hindustan has a richest tradition even the west is now coming means even the people from outside india are coming to india and trying to learn this music trying to learn the music of india so in spite of traveling around the world he was only fond of the place where he lived in where he was born and brought up so once one is uh, once uh, one of his students wanted him to head a chennai school in usa and he also promised that he would replicate he would imitate he would make temples everywhere just like ustad bismillah khan liked but then khan sahab said that would you would he be able to transport river ganga even if he was in a foreign country he would yearn for india for hindustan if he was in mumbai he would think of banaras and the holy ganga and if he was in banaras he would miss the yearning matha of dumrao so we can only say that this great man with a simple heart with a pure heart is a perfect example of the rich cultural heritage of india one that effortlessly accepts that the devout muslim like him can very naturally play the shehnai every morning at the kashi vishwanath temple so music knows no bounds no religion it is something that directly connects to the heart and ustad bismillah khan's life is also an example of such a rich and cultural heritage of india whatever religion he may be he was a believer in music and therefore he would play the shehna every morning at the kashi vishwanath temple so this is the story this is the a glimpse this is a glimpse of the life of ustad bismillah khan and how he became this famous person this famous shehnai player who made the shehnai popular throughout the world though he is no more but the shehnai will always remain alive the music will always go on it will come out of it and that is what the story is all about it is about this beautiful shehnai player who plays the shehnai in such a manner that it will make people mesmerize for a long long time 
so i hope students you have understood the story you liked what you came to know about him and you can hear his songs you can hear the way he has played the music beautifully it will really touch your heart and i believe you will like it so please go to the story thank you